Granny's Fried Chicken. Sit right back, the time is now. Tammy's gonna show you how to cook it up like Mama used to do. Well, she makes it easy. All right, to skillet fried chicken. Chris said it tastes just like Mama Nichols. So, if you want to go back in time like Chris did tonight, close them eyes. You can pretend you're a kid all over again when you take a bite. Hey y'all, it's Chris and Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks and today we're going to do something I haven't done in years and that is Granny's Fried Chicken in a skillet with some shortening. Yep, that's the way she did it. Not a lot of oil. So we're going to get started. I'm going to slice this chicken in half and we're only going to fry up half of it, okay? Um, and I've got me a sharp knife. So I'm just going to cut it into pieces. I have rinsed it and dried it. This wing is giving me fits. Just got to pop the joint open. Get it eventually, won't I? And now we're going to get our thigh. There's the thigh. I'm just going to cook half of this because I want my skillet not to be too full of chicken. And it's just me and Chris. So you can cut out the wishbone, but I'm not. I'm going to go right down the breastbone and cut it in half. Just like so. And now we got a half a chicken that I can... Uh, using some stock. I'm actually going to, because this piece of chicken is so much bigger than the rest of it, I'm going to cut it right through the middle. Make sure you got you a good knife. If you don't have a good knife, this is a Rada knife, just like Granny had. You can find them on the website. All right, so there's one side of that breast. Here's the other side of the breast. All right, we're gonna use one egg. We're gonna beat it with a fork. We're gonna salt and pepper the chicken. And then we're gonna put some flour on it. There's our egg. Now we're gonna salt and pepper our chicken. And you don't wanna get one hand dirty with chicken. Just use one for the chicken and one for your spices. Make sure you salt and pepper it good. All right, and now we're going to pepper it. And pepper makes good chicken, don't it, Chris? Yep. So put plenty of pepper on it because that's all I'm using. Because that's all Granny will use. Yep, no paprika or anything like that. Just salt and pepper. Yep. And that egg's not going to wash this off. A lot of people think the egg washes it off, and it don't. So, I like to use it, not in my flour, but on the actual chicken. All right, now we're going to put the egg on it. Swish it around some. And now I'm going to put some self-rising flour. We use self-rising because it's crunchier to us. We think so, okay? We're going to batter it and get it on this tray. And it's good for it to sit just a minute while your grease melts before you drop it, okay? So go ahead and batter all of it. Chris is ready for it, ain't you, Chris? He loves oh, fried yeah. chicken. Mm -hmm. It's hard to mess up fried chicken, as long as you got your grease hot. But you gotta have that grease hot. My granny used to fry chicken all the time. And I'm sure she had plenty of her own yard birds that she fried. She always had laying hands. But now when my daddy was younger, he ate so much chicken that he don't even like chicken. <laughs> oh. I guess he's seen his mama ring too many chicken's necks to like chicken anymore. Back in the day, that's how you had to do it. I'm glad I don't have to do that. Nowadays, women don't even want to get a whole chicken and cut it up. They sure wouldn't be able to do what Granny did. 
Would they, Chris? Nope. <laughs> they want to get it all prepared in a little container. All right, there you got it. Good old chicken. Make sure you wash them hands real good when you're messing with chicken, okay? And everything that it touches. All right, get your skillet really hot. You got to have your nice deep iron skillet. This skillet is three inches tall. And get it really good and hot. And granny likes shortening. We're going to put shortening in it. And we're going to let it melt. Now my skillet's hot. So when that chicken hits that, it's going to brown pretty quick. And you're going to use a lid on top of this chicken so that it gets done on the inside too. All right. And I'll just kind of show you how Granny did it. Granny let hers fry for a long time. Sitting in the grease. This thing is on medium, but it, I think it's plenty hot. All right, we're going to drop it. So I'm gonna put this wing in this middle part. All right, we're gonna let it get good and brown. I'm gonna turn up the heat up to high. Now, if you've got electric, you may not have to go all the way up to high, but this is gas, so mine don't get quite as hot as yours. And we're gonna let it get good and brown. And we're gonna brown this chicken on both sides really good before we put a cover over the top of it. So. Look at that good looking chicken getting brown. Now, when you're using self-rising flour and shortening, you always have to add a little extra shortening because even if you're frying okra or doing anything with it, when, you, when you're using that flour, um, it soaks that shortening up. But that's how they cook back in the day. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I started this show, me and Chris was actually a lot skinnier, and I used shortening all the time, didn't I, Chris? Oh, yeah. We ate a lot of shortening. Yeah, my, my, my uh, mamma used lard to cook her chicken in and stuff. Everybody used lard or shortening, pretty much. Yep. I've got this little skillet here heating up, because I'm on, I have one piece that wouldn't fit in this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this one because I know it's getting brown. You don't want it to get too brown, burn or nothing. You can smell that flour when it starts cooking. Thank you, Chris. Oh, yeah. And it's gonna stay in there for a while. I'm not flipping that one yet. Now, I've had some of y'all tell me, whoo, that Crisco's expensive, and it is. But when you fry chicken like this, you're not filling it up full of oil or grease, and you don't have to use as much of it, then you can just make gravy out of what's left in the bottom. Um, I'm turning these a little bit to get them brown on the sides, and then we're gonna cover it and let them get good and done on the inside. Now, I started this other chicken in the different skillet, uh, the other piece, and now I'm gonna bring them all over here together because now I'm getting room and I'm gonna be able to uh, cover them all at one time. So I'm gonna turn the one in the middle off, move it back. And these are probably getting pretty brown on that other side. Oh yeah. This one's getting the brownish because it's next to the potatoes cooking on the back. So that part of the skillet's actually hotter than the rest of the skillet. So what I'll do is I'm gonna move this one that I started later over there on the hot side. Now, this is a lot different, y'all, than uh, deep frying. Because when you're deep frying, you just drop your chicken and you time it. But this way, you got to make sure you get it good and done. And the way you know a chicken is done is when you slice into it, all the juices should run clear. If there's any blood at all, it's not ready. That's the best way I can tell you. Just a home, homemade way to know without having a thermometer. You just cook the fire out of it. Right, Chris? 
Yep. Like Brittany did. Just cook it and cook it and cook it. Especially when you're not using a lot of oil like this. So this is good and crunchy. Boy, don't that look pretty. And so I'm about to put a lid on it. I am, I am. I'm going to turn this one over on the other side. And we're going to put a lid over the top of it. Get your lid. Now, if you don't have a lid that fits your skillet, use a something else. A, a lid, no, a plate. I wouldn't use a plate. Okay. Because our plates today might break. We'll just, yeah. Get you a good lid to go over the top of it. Just try to find a boiler that's got a lid big enough or the right size and use it. If you have purchased one of my green bean pots, like this one right here, right now the only color on the website is blue. If you go on there, if you purchase this green bean pot, the lid to this green bean pot is this same lid that I've got on my chicken. It fits the 10 inch iron skillets perfect. So that's another good reason to go get my green bean pot. Because then you got you a good silicone lid for your cast iron. We'll see y'all in a few minutes. I'm gonna turn this chicken down. And now we're gonna let it get cooked and done. I'm gonna put it on a medium, a medium low and we're gonna almost let it steam in there and get that chicken good and done on the inside. Cause we're done browning it, okay? All right, it's been five minutes into our timer and I'm gonna go ahead and turn them. And remember that when you put this on there, it's gonna soften up that crust a little. So be careful and try not to knock any off. to flip that wing that's in the way. It's been 10 minutes since we covered them. Okay, so we're gonna turn them again. See how they're looking. These are going to be ready pretty quick. I'm on. I'm on time off for two, five more minutes, and they're going to be done. And I may even turn them down just a hair because they're getting pretty brown. And I've got them pretty low, but that grease as it fries does uh, render some, and it gets hotter. Now, there's a lot of chicken in this pan, but I've got it covered, and this is different than deep frying. So it's absolutely fine. Um, everything's cooking evenly and doing a really good job. So you don't have to worry about it being overcrowded. I did start them in two different pans and then combine them when I got ready to uh, cover it because I was trying to get them good and brown. Chris said this was his favorite meal. Fried chicken, creamed potatoes, and green beans. Yummy, yum. -yum. All right, there's a little bit too much grease in here. I'm pouring it off because I'm only gonna make about a cup of gravy. And it's still got plenty of drippings in it, okay? And now we're gonna put in some flour. Some pepper. And some salt. Okay, I gotta turn this back up. And 
and I'm using milk because that's what my mama used. When she made gravy, she always used milk. Ooh, it's hot in here, y'all. Fried chicken's hot in the summer. Are right, we gonna put some creamed potatoes on the plate? I whipped them up with the mixer so they'll be nice and fluffy. Green beans, and this is my granny green bean recipe. It's absolutely delicious. And there you have it. And of course you can put gravy on your chicken and cream potatoes if you want to. Our potatoes. All right, y'all, this was my big piece, the biggest piece of breast you can see that it's good and done. The good thing about covering it is it gets nice and tender and juicy on the inside. It's still good and crunchy on the outside. This is the thigh. You can see it's good and done. You don't see anything pink or running. And so if you want to make some good fried chicken like Granny did, you can go on the website, go to Shop Now Cookware. You're going to see my 3-inch tall, 10-inch iron skillet. You're also going to see my green bean pot. You buy those two things, you'll have the lid and the skillet. And you can make chicken just like my granny did. All right, I get to do the taste test. Since I am the chicken man, there's a chicken leg. <laughs> that is so good. I mean, my grandmother used Crisco or lard, and that tastes just like her chicken. That's all she used. Salt, I mean, talk about going back in time. So, we need to turn this camera off because I want to eat this chicken like now. All right, the skillet fried chicken. Chris said it tastes just like Mamaw Nichols. So, if you want to go back in time like Chris did tonight, close them eyes. You can pretend you're a kid all over again when you take a bite. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mamma did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. <laughs> Granny's fried chicken. I mean, she just showed you how to cook it up like Mama.